Okay, so we've done the two y-axis pockets and now we're going to go ahead and shift our attention to this pocket here. Uh, this is a wrapped pocket and we call it a wrapped pocket because the floor is not flat. It is a cylindrical shape that is basically if you were to take this rectangle and project it onto a cylinder it would be wrapped around the turning axis of the machine. So to do this operation we're going to use a different operation type called a wrap operation. So to do that the first thing that I want to do is create my feature and on these types of operations um, what I'll do is I'll pick just the loop and I like to pick the loop at the bottom. This one is not a through pocket or a window it has a floor to it. Uh, so on this one, I'm just going to grab the bottom one so my depth will be set to zero. It's very shallow, so I don't need to really worry about that. So what I'm going to do here is on the feature toolbar, uh, we're going to go ahead and just pick auto chain. And what that does is it adds a chain to my list, and you can see it here where uh, it defines the outside boundary at the bottom of that pocket, at the floor of the pocket. So now I'm ready to apply my operation. So we're going to go to milling again and rather than using these icons here we're going to come to these wrapped icons here and we're going to select the second one wrapped pocketing. So for a pocketing operation uh, we're going to do very much the same thing that we were doing before. I'll call this wrap pocket. And yeah, we can do the six millimeter end mill. And these speeds and feeds look fine. For the wrap, uh, this is asking is the feature wrapped, yes or no? So this is the same as in before, the, you know, the earlier versions of Esprit. This feature is wrapped. It's not a flat plane feature, so we set this to yes. The working diameter, what we're going to do here is I'm going to pick this face and go to my solids tab and I can see that the diameter is set to 2. So actually this is correct already. We're going to leave that at 2. Uh, tolerance is fine. Cylindrical feature tolerance. We might want to tighten things up slightly. Uh, we can do a concentric outcut, that's fine. We do want a rough pass. We're not going to do a wall finish or a floor finish. Uh, tolerance, that's fine. Total depth again is going to be zero. Uh, incremental depth doesn't really matter unless you want it to be a very shallow cut. So we're just going to, you could just leave it whatever it is or just put in a zero. And then for the rough here, uh, we can, let's start with a big step over and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. And then we can do a helical contained, helical angle, let's say maybe two degrees like before. And I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. And we should see an operation created. So we can see our entry move and then we can see the actual cutting passes. And if you look at the toolpath, let's go to simulation and we can see that with the larger step over, because the bottom of the tool is flat and the part is not, the step over is really going to determine these scallops. So this is a, an interesting feature on this part. I'm going to go ahead and just tighten that step over down uh, something a lot tighter. So, you know, again, you don't need to, um, uh, you know, worry about certain things like this if you have no floor in this pocket. So if this pocket was a window, you know, you wouldn't need such a tight step over because you're not worried about that. So here we see the whoop, the toolpath executing with the tighter step over. And we can see the floor of that pocket looks a little bit smoother. 
So depending on whatever you want to do, you know, there's a simulation tolerance and the mathematics of how it's rendered on the screen. So, you know, it's, it doesn't, it's going to somewhat look like this, but it's not going to look exactly like that. So uh, that is how you do a wrapped operation. And what we can do now is take a look at maybe these wrapped drilling operations here. So if you recall from one of the earlier videos, we made those uh, outside simple holes. So if I look at the nomenclature here, I can grab these six holes and we can view that using non-shaded and that will show us that I have those six holes selected and now we can apply an operation for that so on the tool assemblies you know looking at the feature you can see it's a eighth and it's a 365 depth so um, I'm gonna see what I have for tools here uh, I see a quarter inch drill let me see where that is. That is a face tool. Uh, we got a, looks like a quarter 20, uh, 201 here for quarter 20 holes. We'll go ahead and use that drill instead of editing the drill itself. I'll just drill them to my tool size. So we're gonna go ahead and drill the holes using that 201 tool. And I am going to once again go to milling and this time I'm going to select drilling and we're going to select, well let's rename this, we'll call this OD uh, quarter 20, quarter 20 holes since that's what we're really doing and we're going to pick that 201. I'm not going to worry about the speeds and feeds. Uh, depth from feature, yes. Do we want a through depth with this? They do go through, so I'll go let's say 30 thousandths beyond the uh, bottom of the hole and we'll say OK. And we should see some operations. So we now have an operation listed underneath each of the um, each of the whole features and it's a little bit hard to see but uh, you can see them in blue there but we have this parent operation so these are child operations and this is the parent operation so basically I selected six hole definitions and because I did that what Esprit did is it, it organized everything for me into this feature folder so it was kind of a good example in that they were uh, listed uh, discontinuously in the feature list when I originally picked them if you recall and now they're all placed in the same folder in the feature list for me so I know where they're all at and now if I want to make a change to something I can just double click this uh, master or this parent operation and then all the the children operations associated to each of these features is going to be updated automatically I don't have to double click and edit each of those six operations separately that's what that's doing for me so we can see them all added to our list here. So let's go ahead and start with the wrapped pocket. And we can see the wrapped pocket is completed. I'm just going to go up to the end there. And then we'll come up. And then we're going to come and do the holes. And I can see that the holes were not drilled completely through. So if I go to the hole tab and I look, remember the holes were actually one eighth and I'm using a quarter. So what it's doing is it's trying to just put the chamfer on with the larger tool. 
So that's because of ignore whole geometry. I'm going to say yes to that. And we're going to just say OK. And we'll see those whole operations redone. And now, oh, they're being drilled all the way through. And we can see those through holes coming out the ID that hex on the ID. Let's turn that machine off. So we can see the um, the larger diameter of the drill hole as well uh, from where the part geometry from the solid model that difference. So you know if you were using the the one eighth drill then that would have been unnecessary but um, Esprit is trying to make sure that your stuff is going to work for you depending on what uh, combination of tools and everything that you you choose based on the feature geometry that you have on your part. So that is how you create some wrapped milling, wrapped drilling operations on multiple uh, features of your model.